Okay, it's right at 11 o'clock. I will go ahead and get started. Um, we do have quite a lot of info to get through. Um, it'll be about a good 50 minutes, and then I would like to have uh, some time for questions uh, for you to ask. So welcome to today's webinar from Office to Site, uniting AEC Teams and Bluebeam subscription offerings. As far as our agenda, these are some of the things that we're going to go through. I'll take you through our vision. There have been some updates, changes, which of course is what we'll spend time discussing today. I'll then go through project collaboration with Bluebeam and some of the new features and functions that we have in that regard. Next, I'll go through self-service, insight, and administration. There is a new portal uh, that you now use for assigning your users their user licenses with regards to subscription. Of course, that's what we're going to talk about. And then next steps um, from today's meeting. I didn't mention already, my name is Jared Hall. I am a technical sales engineer with Bluebeam. And I hope that if you have any questions from today, from this webinar, you'll be able to reach out to myself if you have any questions or if you want to go over something in additional. Towards the end of last year, we actually announced our new suite of collaboration tools. And this is designed for the construction industry with the subscription plans that we have just launched. If you have not aware of a switching to subscription, you should have either a talk to your account manager. That's either if you purchase Bluebeam directly from us or if you purchase through any of our reseller partners. If you've not had that discussion, please reach out to your respective um, way of purchasing and you could get on the way of using subscription. Last year, we actually celebrated our 20th anniversary. And along with that, we have actually launched our, um, or during that time, we actually launched our first application, which was push button PDF. But today, now over 2 million people use our software in 130 countries. These solutions have helped customers actually finish projects faster, reduce risk, and also maximize their return on investment. The past two years have been fast-tracked um, or fast-paced in where companies actually need a new way of working. In order for you to have a digital solution to where you can re work remotely regardless of where you're located, having this, fe this flexibility is a huge advantage. A lot of our customers have already told us of having these type softwares installed uh, since you're not able to be on site, but work needs to actually continue. With this being said, solutions must be accessible from anywhere, from any device. Tools need seamless and secure data flow and interoperability. Also, as well as having the ability to scale on any type of size project. And also providing your users the tools that they actually need when they're on site. We have actually heard from some of our customers, this particular customer in our APAC region. Um, they, for example, are a very large steel detailing company. And for them, they were actually continuing to work on paper, but also they saw that this was very inefficient for them. Also, if there were mistakes that were being made, it just wasn't easy for them to collaborate in a paper-based type process. So they did seek a way in which they can digitize the workflows instead of having to work in a manual type way. Our customers also need secure interoperability to improve workflows. So things like having seamless data flows uh, for interoperability or, or for connectivity within your tech stack. Of course, you have other applications that you may using like Microsoft SharePoint, things of this sort. 
you may want to use those applications with the solutions that were coming out. And these are some of the things that we're making sure that we give you that access to be able to do that. Also being able to access your project data within projects, for example, using things like Studio Project, if that's something that you've used. Also, we're keeping those things in mind with the cloud solutions that we have available that you'll be able to pull information from those applications and being able to use that info in the cloud as well. Also, one other customer, this multinational Arab, you may have heard of them. They have over 15,000 people with many projects involving several stakeholders. Without them having a secure digital environment, and also being able to connect to their current tech stack of things like ProjectWise, Arab's team were relying on disconnected markup processes and actually emailing information for collaboration. But with looking at our solutions, they were able to connect to some of these other applications that you may be using downstream. And this is what we, or this is what Bluebeam has actually has actually provided to them, excuse me. Also, we are finding in various markets uh, that the skilled labor source or labor field is very scarce. Also, projects are becoming more costly. I'm sure some of you have may, ha may have noticed margins are very pressured at the moment with the rising of cost and also standardization. These are some of the key things um, that you need to find ways to prove efficiencies, also to help you mitigate risk and also remain competitive in your respective markets. To meet the evolving needs of the industry, we have had to evolve ourselves so we have actually come out or developed some new solutions. And these are some of the solutions that we're actually gonna go through on our webinar today. Also by us investing in this technology and also infrastructure to help you continue to stay competitive. These are one of the things that we saw that we needed to do um, in addition to the current software. So those, those of you that are current users of review, Review is not going anywhere. It is still our flagship product. However, we do have some companion utilities that can now be used. And we do have two specific workflows that I'll take you through a demonstration on how that's actually being used. And then over time, we will actually start to build out our software as a service environment. So some of the things that you'll see me go through on the demonstration today are the initial offerings that we'll have. We're not switching everything that you know of review desktop. We're not moving that to cloud. So you'll still have the desktop application, but you will have these additional companion products to use. So as I mentioned earlier, review desktop is staying the same, except one of the big things that actually changed, it was towards the end of last year, is our switch to subscription. So those of you that are still on perpetual licensing, if you've not contacted or have been contacted by either us or your respective resellers, definitely want to have that conversation of giving your perpetual license switched over to subscription so that you're able to take advantage of the two new things that you see on screen. So I'll do a short video or excuse me, a short demo later of Bluebeam Cloud. Once you switch to subscription, this will give you access to Bluebeam Cloud. And also since we've switched to subscription, the org admin portal, this is how you're going to administer or manage your named user licenses. So if you need to move licenses to another person because someone has maybe left the business or a new person has started, you'll be using your organizational admin portal to do that. 
And that's something you'll be able to do yourselves. You won't need to come to us um, in the case of like a perpetual license if you needed to move that license from one desktop PC to another, um, you'd have to make that request. But now with the ORC admin portal, once you switch to subscription, you'll have this capability to do yourself. So first, I just wanna talk about collaboration and you actually being able to set up standardization across the projects that you actually work on. And this first initial demo I'm gonna do is those of you that have been using review, maybe a little bit review for you, but also I'll show you what the display looks like for review 21, if you've not seen it, or those of you that haven't switched to subscription just yet. So this is the review 21. Actually, you may notice this actually looks very similar to current review 20. One of the things that I'll just point out that's different is because this is now the named user license. At the top, or top right hand corner, you will actually see that I have actually logged in. And it does tell me the actual package that I have installed. So review 21 comes in three options, basic, core, and complete. That's different than the previous options that we had. And also it tells me the region. This is just my demo server that I'm actually logged into. So this is my named user license. So those of you, you may be thinking, well, hey, I've logged into my desktop, but can I use it to log in other locations as well? And yes, you can. And you'll see me uh, do that when I go into Bluebeam Cloud. So this Bluebeam ID, and if any of you on the call have already used Bluebeam Studio, you're already familiar with the concept of using a Bluebeam ID. To use Studio, you would have to have already set up your Bluebeam ID. That's the exact same ID of what you'll use to log into Review Desktop. Everything else from a user perspective with regards to Review 21 is the same. So all of the features and functions that you know of Review Perpetual License or Virgil version 20 is the exact same as you see here in Review 21. And I just wanted to go through and show you things with regards to being able to do takeoffs and also making sure that <clears throat> excuse me making sure that you are using things like your tool chest of course i can have my tool chest in this case that you're seeing on screen i have a tool chest set up that i have measurements already saved and these are the type of things that to help you decide how are you going to use your workflow and using Review Desktop in conjunction with Bluebeam Cloud, have things already set up in Review Desktop and then share that file to the cloud. Because a lot of the functionality that you can do in Review Desktop, I cannot do that in Bluebeam Cloud. So once I have my document set up, in this case, I'm actually doing uh, takeoffs. I have a sample here of a flooring measurement I already have stored. If I wanted to apply any measurements to this drawing that I have, just gonna zoom in here for you. And it's just a matter of coming to my measurements that I've already saved and then applying them to the drawing sheet. So very easily, you'll see I'll be able to do things like quantity takeoffs. I can apply my measurement on screen. Just a little quick tip that as you notice the text is being covered up by the underlying PDF content. If you hold down the shift key and the left mouse button, you will actually see to where it turns into this highlight color. And then I can just move the text for the actual measurement. I can move that to where I want. So just to keep things nice and neat. And if I want to continue taking off from or doing takeoffs onto this sheet, of course, Selecting again from my tool chest and then applying that measurement option directly onto the drawing sheet. So because you already have your measurement saved in the tool chest, notice I can go through 
and do this rather quickly. So again, hold the shift button and the left mouse button at the same time, and then I can move that text. Now, in addition to this, I have also created a legend. So you can also create a legend just either from this tool chest option. If you click on the cog, we'll select a legend, new legend, and then I just specify the fills or options that I want it to display. So this is actually linking to the columns that I have set up in the markup list. And you see that I do have some calculations automatically happening here. So if you need to use this for estimations, this is a very good way in which you can do that. So I'm showing you this first on the desktop because I can then take this document and then share it amongst colleagues using Bluebeam Cloud. Just before I go into Bluebeam Cloud, so you've switched to subscription. And once you switch to subscription, you will automatically receive an email once the order is placed, either via the web store, if you purchase through web store, or if you purchase through a reseller, you will automatically receive, or once the order is processed, you will receive an email, or if you purchase directly from us, the order is processed, you will then receive an email inviting you to the org admin or the organizational admin. Definitely want to give thought of, you know, it, within your organization, who is it going to be managing the user licenses? So of course, this could be someone on your IT team, or I know for different customers, there's different people, or it's up to you who you want to decide that's gonna manage your subscription licenses that person is the person that you knew you do need to make us aware of who will be managing that or provide their email address because they will receive the email to join the organizational admin once you join the organizational admin or receive the email of course you'll come to this screen to add in your users and this is not necessarily a problem at, let's say if you have one to ten users so you come in as you see the fills that are required. So I'll type in the person's name, last name, or first name, last name, email address, region location. And also I need to specify if this person will be an organizational admin or just an end user. You can have multiple organizational admins if you have offices in multiple locations. Maybe you want an admin at that local office location. As you see, if it's maybe one to 10 users, that's not so complicated as you're having to type in and save those details for 10 people. But you have, if you have more than 10, that could be very cumbersome. So we do have an option to where you can do a bulk add users. So if you choose this selection here, you will be able to upload or fill out a template so once you come to bulk add users, if you choose this option here, it will give you a Excel template that you can fill in just to let you see what that looks like. So here's the template. As you see, there are fills that are mandatory that you need to fill in. So first and last name, email address. You will need to set true or false if that user will actually be an organizational admin or just an end user license. So those options are the options that are mandatory. However, we do have additional fields that you can use just to help you manage your users in the organizational admin. And of course, the more info that you put in, the easier it is to make sure users are who they are. So if you can fill in the additional info, but as you see, I don't have to fill in all of that info. Also, just to note that that template, I can only, or you're only allowed to do this in batches of 500. So if you have thousands of users, we do have customers that are in that situation, you can or will have to do them in batches of 500. Once you filled out the Excel sheet, save it, and then just either browse or drag it and drop it to this window here, because of course, we're doing this so that we can bulk import our users. 
so that we're not having to manually type them in. And also, it's just referencing here the fills that are mandatory once you fill them in, what you have to fill in. Also notice once you go through the run validation option, this can take up to about 15 minutes before they actually show, show up in your organizational admin. So just give that a few minutes. If you've gone past that, uh, then definitely reach out to us if you need support. So there's a great way in which, or this is the step that you will have to go through to assign your named users to the licenses. So one of the licenses that you've purchased. So if you purchased a pool of, let's say, 10 core licenses, you will then need to go through and assign those licenses to the various users that you want to have them. Or if you have a lot of users, let's say more than 10, you may want to use this bulk add user option. Also the organizational admin, we will be adding functionality to where you can see usage. So you will get an idea of how users are using review. And we will be adding to that functionality going forward. Some of the full functionality isn't there just yet. You will be able to see your users and their licenses that they're assigned. But we will eventually give you granular information as far as what features functions they're using in the software. So that would be quite handy for you to know if later on for projects, if you need to move licenses that you'll be able to do based on people's job roles. Maybe there's a person that needs to do um, calculations and you have some complete licenses, things of being able to do formula calculations in the markup list, that particular feature is in the complete package. So you can have a mix of licenses and then move those user licenses to people that actually need them. Or maybe there's someone that has a core license. However, they just need to open and be able to view PDFs. You can then just move them to a read-only license. So this gives you lots of flexibility of being able to manage your user licenses, and that's all via the organizational admin portal. So you now specify your user licenses. Now that you've done that, you will then be able to go through and use things like Bluebeam Cloud. So with Bluebeam Cloud, as I mentioned, we are not, or we've not come out with this, app, this application to replace Bluebeam Review or to put everything in Review Desktop into the cloud. This is a companion product, so you will still continue to use Review 21 as you know it. However, we've now added some functionality for more of infilled use. So think of workflows to where you're in the field and you need, able to, need to be able to quickly use the application as opposed to having the full-blown application like on your laptop or desktop PC. So once you launch Bluebeam Cloud, just before I go to the screen, just show you how to get to this screen. So if you go to the main Bluebeam website, here you'll see the option for login. And under login, you see the first option for Bluebeam Cloud. Also to access the organizational admin where I was showing you the screen to add users, here's your org admin portal. So once you set up your org admin portal to access it or to get to it, you just come to the main Bluebeam website, select login, and then here are the options here. Also, just as I'm on the screen, once you become a subscription or switch your licenses to, to subscription from Perpetual, if you've not done that, you also get access to Bluebeam University. So Bluebeam University is great if you're needing any type of training. This is a formal training, yet it is self-paced. Uh, so that's one of the pluses of switching to subscription. This is normally a 200 pound plus per user cost to access Bluebeam University. But once you switch to subscription, you do have access or you will get access to Bluebeam University. So very big plus for that of being able, because we want you to be able to get the most access out of the software. So I've set up my users. 
we've now logged into Bluebeam Cloud. I'm just going to go back to the main screen that you will see. Give it a few minutes. So this is the first screen that you'll see when you come to Bluebeam Cloud. And if you notice, I am actually on a web browser. This does support all of the standard web browsers. I'm actually using Chrome, as you see here. This could be a web browser on a mobile device, like a tablet or phone, except the user experience is a little bit different and you don't get all of the options, but I'll come on to that here in a second. So the first space that I come to is something called the My or My Workspace. So this is your personal workspace and you can upload files directly to this workspace. So this workspace is if I want to work on files, I don't need to, or no one needs to see them. I just want to add markups onto it. So I'm just gonna select the file here. Actually, we won't use that one. We'll use this one. So here is my file on screen. Just to give you an idea, or if you've not seen Bluebeam Cloud before, Notice I've got some markups here automatically on screen. So these are markups in the cloud. I've not installed anything, so I could have, I mean, I am using my desktop PC or my laptop here, but if I didn't have that installed, I could just open my web browser, log in via the Bluebeam website, and now I can do some simple markups. And as you see, we do have some simple markup options here, like cloud rectangle, or if you need to do things like callouts, you have callout box or cloud callout. So if I wanted to select that option, then select what I want to mark up a callout. This was a cloud plus. Um, so I can actually is this. And if you've noticed, it automatically gives me this properties box to where I can change the font or the color. Also font size. So all of these options I'm able to do. And again, I'm using this um, via the cloud access. Now, one thing you may have noticed that's very similar to what we had in Review Desktop is the tool chest. So this little icon here, when you switch to subscription and you first log into Review Desktop, there will be a pop-up message that will ask you, do you want to make your tool chest available in the cloud? If you click yes to that, you will then have some tools or the, there, there are some tools that come automatically in the tool chest. And also now I did click yes and some of my tools are not fully there because they're not yet supported in the cloud. So some of the tools, as you see, you may have a question mark on some of the tools that you have ported over from Review Desktop. That only means that those tools are not supported in cloud just yet. Remember, this is our first step uh, into cloud application. However, there are some tools that do ship standard. Um, so we do actually have a tool test for architect review, contractor review, and also for engineer review. So these tool chests will come automatically and these will allow you to do these type markups that you see here for these various disciplines. So very quickly, you can actually do some markups in cloud, but again, remember this is just a lightweight tool that we can use once we're on site. Just gonna go back to our dashboard. So that was the My Workspace space within Bluebeam Cloud. Main reason why you would use Bluebeam Cloud is potentially for two of the workflows that we have available. So we can go to projects. And once you come to projects, you can then, or you'll need to go through and create a project. Those of you that have used Bluebeam Studio before, this is a little bit similar to how you have to set up a studio session, um, and that's either a studio project or session. So same exact thing for projects. I need to go through and set up the project that I want to share amongst all of the people that I want to invite to the project. So I have this project here that I've already created. 
And in this project, you'll see that I can actually input things like the location of the project so that when my people that I invite to the project, they'll at least know where the site is physically located. It will actually pull up uh, via Google Maps. I can actually lay the layout of the building plans directly on that site. So you'll be able to see that. Also, I'll be able to view the team members in that project. As the person that's setting up the project, you're the project admin, you will be able to go and specify what type of access does that particular user have in the project. So are they an admin user or are they just a member or viewer? So depending on what they need to do, you may need to come and change their permission level after you've initially invited them, but probably not often, but this is where you actually come to do that if you need to do that. So I have my project team members invited to the project. They're receiving an email. So as you see, I'm just inputting their email address. Also, as the project admin, you will then, actually, let me just go back to drawings. You will, you're the one that's adding the drawings that you want to allow those people to see once they've actually joined the project. Another nice thing, remember I was talking about how this is a companion product to review desktop. I can import drawing files also from other applications. So if I come to add drawings, I can do import drawings from integrations. Actually, I have one better screen I'll show you for uh, integrations. So if you're using like cloud storage locations, I can actually use that to store or bring in files. And if I come to integrations, so these are the integrations that if you've already got these accounts or cloud services, you can use them to actually connect to Bluebeam Cloud. So if you're pulling from SharePoint or using Box or Dropbox or OneDrive, Google Drive, or Ignite, if you've already got accounts on these type of services, you can connect and then be able to pull files directly from these services to your project that you need to set up. I can also pull files from a studio project. So again, we're using this just to make it easy. I'm not having to go through and set up a studio session. If that's the way you want to work, you of course can continue to do that. Um, however, I can actually use Bluebeam Cloud. Also, we do have this document area. So you can, again, as the project administrator, you can set up folders within project. Maybe these are specification pages you want to make available for the project that you're working on. You can set up this folder structure and then set uh, your documents that you want users to be able to view or be able to see um, as well when you set up the project. So as you see, we're giving you a way in which to make it easy to share files with your project stakeholders. And also if they need to do any markups in the cloud, um, you've seen me do that already. If I just come back to the dashboard, so for this particular project that I have set up, these are the different drawing files. Um, if I need to do markups, I'll just take you back to the screen that we saw similar in the MySpace workspace but this is now the drawing that's actually part of the project. My drawing file then displays, and also here, of course, are my markups that are available to, available to me uh, in the cloud. I actually see there's already, excuse me, some markups here. If you click on the markup, you have your properties window, as I showed you before. Now, those of you that are familiar with review are very, of course, familiar with the markup list. The markup list displays a little bit different here in Bluebeam Cloud, and it's this little icon here. So once I select that, it opens this window on the right side. So because I was using the tool chest options, I'm able to see what was the discipline that actually placed that markup and also some of the things like set in the status. So those of you that are familiar with the status column in the markup list, 
this is my status option here. So it just displays a little bit different. At the moment, you cannot customize these options as you can do with the desktop software, but that will come in future. These are the states in which you can select within Bluebeam Cloud. So you can actually come and specify if something is accepted or if I need to see more detail about that particular comment or markup that was placed, I do see that information here. You may have seen on the dashboard screen, being able to see or for snag list management, notice here on screen, I'm able to see there's three active snags and I actually see there is one that's actually overdue. So this is one of the workflows in which we have available of being able to be on site. Now with the new subscription option, you will have access to a Bluebeam Cloud app. There is an app available for iOS devices. If you download the app, that's the app that you could use once you're on site. Of course, you may be on site and you may not have internet connectivity. Anything you do within the app, that information will be cached until you log back on and then that information will be available or updated to the project. So that would be one of the pluses for using the app. I know some of you may be thinking, well, hey, that's iOS. What about the other mobile devices that are out there like Android? That is something that we are aware of and are working on to have an Android app as well. So you can think of the workflow would be, I'm on site, I'm using the app, and if I wanted to go through and do snack list management, now here's my dashboard of where I can see snags that have already been um, selected or added. If I wanted to view that information, notice, and I'll, I'll actually go back and show you, we'll place a snag, but I wanted you to see the options that you get within this dashboard. Notice it gives me a picture of where that is actually on the drawing sheet. And also you may notice that the mouse icon actually turns into a finger. So if I click that, it'll take me to the drawing sheet. I'll do that here in a second. Also, you have your description information. You can set your priority as far as that snag that you added to the drawing sheet. Here are my status options. Also, I do have a date picker to be able to choose when this is due as to see it is actually past due. Also, who it's been assigned to, or if you have any groups that you want to assign uh, that snag list to. And of course, you can upload photos. So if you are using the app, you can upload photos and physically, of course, take them with the device, or you can already have photos in the camera roll in the case that you're using a mobile type device that you'll be able to pick from the camera roll and then attach those photos to this particular snag that you may have. Earlier, I spoke about being able to connect directly to the drawing sheet. So if I click where that particular snack was, it then takes me to the drawing sheet so I can see that space in relation to the entire floor plan. And here's that particular issue here. So this is where you want to definitely give some thought of how you want to use this in your environment. And the reason why I mentioned that is it can actually pick up the space of where you're located. So if we wanted to place a snag, let's say in one of these offices, I've already set up spaces. Now to set up spaces, you would have needed to have done that in either review desktop or when the PDF was created and space information is there, that information will automatically be there. But a lot of times space information has not been done when whoever created the PDF from Revit or AutoCAD. So you may need to go and do that before you upload the documents to Bluebeam Cloud to this project. So you, you of course can do that in review, in review Desktop. So if I wanted to place a snag item, here's my icon for snag item. And let's say the wall area needs to be repainted here. So once I click, 
Notice it automatically picks up the location information because that space has been automatically set. I can then give the description of what's wrong. Also set your priority and you get the idea of how you can go through and use it. We have had customers in various of our regions going through to actually use Bluebeam Cloud and they actually do find it quite intuitive. Of course, customers are always asking, hey, can you add this? Can you add that? So we're always you know, interested in feedback to see how we can make the solution better. We do have some disciplines that are set here automatically uh, in the solution, but you can actually come and freehand type uh, in disciplines as well if any of the disciplines that we have here are not listed. So don't worry if you don't see it uh, in the list here. And we'll choose paint. And I could upload a photo if I wanted, or if you were, of course, using this on a mobile device, you can then snap the picture at that time. It will activate the camera, and then you will see the photo placed. And then all you need to do is just select Save. And if we go back to our dashboard, I can also upload RFI information as well. If that's something that you need to do, you just select create RFI and then fill in all of the items here. So remember, this is a tool in which to be able to be used easily once you're on site. So either for RFIs and also for submittals as well. So you can have all this available in an easy to use cloud-based application and you're not using or needing to use the full desktop license of review. Except being able to have review or have review desktop, you do want to give some thought of, you know, how are you gonna use the tool? Do I need to have spaces automatically set up? Do I notice how we have here actually sheet names already created? So these are the things that you'll do in Review Desktop before you upload your files because I won't be able to do sheet name creation in Review Desktop. Of course, if I have the sheet names here, it just makes it easy for when users need to use this, they can see, okay, which sheet do I need to go to for this particular item? Let's say if I need to do snag list items from, a, from the mechanical drawing, then I have all of my drawing files there. So you definitely want to think ahead of time of how your users are going to use the application. Have all those files accessible to them to just make it easy that once you're on site, I'll be able to do my snag list management or I can create snag list, um, oh, sorry, RFIs if you're on site as well. Also, just in regards to creating um, comments, notice all of the shapes that I've created, it just breaks it out into two different sections as far as the markup list. So I have my comment section and also shapes as well. And that may be a little bit of a learning curve in relations to how we display the markup list in review desktop so that's these are just some of the things that are different and same exact thing if you need to see the actual details of the information there you just click on the details tab and it shows you that info so just going back to my dashboard there's one other thing i wanted you to see as well there is a help menu. So you do have these support items. These will take you to getting started guides. So those of you that are new to review, or sorry, to Bluebeam Cloud, you'll be able to access that info here. Also resources, there are some video tutorials on how to actually upload files. So a lot of the things that I've taken you through already. Of course, a feature request, we do want to we always welcome feedback, and this will, of course, just help us build out the 
tools even more, just like we have the feature request in Review Desktop. So this is where you will access that from within Bluebeam Cloud. And of course, if you need help, uh, there is a email of the team for support as well. So I'm just taking through you through some design reviews. So we started out looking at being able to do quantity takeoff, setting up your files the way that you need them, have your tool chest already set up, going through and how you do that, getting your files and your documents ready to be stored or uploaded into Bluebeam Cloud to share with your project team members. And then one of the workflows that we have available in Bluebeam Cloud is Snagless Management. The other is Submittals. Those are the two main workflows that we have available for mobile. If you open up Review, uh, excuse me, Bluebeam Cloud on a mobile device, those are the only two things that you'll be able to do is Snagless Management and also Submittals. You won't be able to do the adding markups, you do need to do, be doing that on a desktop. So it could be a web browser, but that web browser you're using on a desktop, not a mobile device. It will know the difference automatically. Uh, so if you're wondering, hey, why do I not have my markup options? And just to correct you, if you think you can do markups on a mobile device, um, that's not available just now. It's now only the snack list management and also being able to do submittals that you can do via a mobile device. Also, I took you through the organizational admin portal. Once you purchase review, so once your order has been processed regardless of the channel that you've purchased through, you will automatically receive an invite, an email, to where you can assign your license, regardless if it's just for you personally or you, if you have multiple users to send those licenses out to, you will need to do that via the org, the org admin portal uh, to manage your users. Again, this is all managed by yourselves. You don't need to come to us to do this for you, unlike how you have to do with the perpetual licensing. Also, one of the things that we have had customers that are interested and the reason why you would like to or would need to switch to subscription is because maybe if you're interested in single sign-on, so this is being able to use your same username password that you use on your desktop for your other desktop applications. You want to use that to, to log into Review Desktop and also to log into Bluebeam Cloud that is available in subscription. However, as you see, there is an asterisk mark there. There is some requirements that you must meet in order to gain access to single sign-on. One of those being you must have switched to subscription. So if you are a current review user on perpetual licensing, you will need to have already switched to subscription. And also we do have a user limitation of at least 100 user licenses um, to be able to access SSO. I don't know if that will continue to be the same, but here initially, those are the two main requirements of being able to use SSO. And also by using or having these new tools available will give you the visibility of what's going on across your organization. So you will be able to see user information or how they actually have used the application. Some of that functionality will be added over time. We have basic functionality at the moment, but those are things that will be added later on. As far as some next steps, if you've not switched to subscription, please reach out to whatever channel that you use to purchase our software. That's either via any of our reseller partners or through us directly if you've not already had that discussion. There are some handouts, so you should see a handout selection of where you can access this information that's on screen. So we do have a product comparison guide. We have had a lot of 
customers ask us, okay, what are the different options or features functions that I get in the current subscription model in comparison to the perpetual model? Also, there is a handout that you'll see there for 10 reasons to upgrade to subscription. Some of those things that I've actually talked about as we've gone through the demonstration. And also, if you have concerns about security, we do have a security page here as far as being able to use things like single sign-on and how are those users' uh, credentials being used to actually log on via the website. Of course, if it's SSO, that allows you to only have to manage, just to get a little bit technical, only have to manage your Active Directory um, location. Those of you that are from an IT or IT admins are familiar with that. As long as you keep Active Directory up to date, that's how you can make sure that access to Bluebeam Cloud or any of our other applications, if you remove a user out of Active Directory, of course, they won't be able to access these solutions. So you're not having to manage or keep track of who has what or access to what, only having to keep track of your Active Directory logins. So just to make it easier from a management perspective. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat feature. I'll just wait a few seconds to see if there's any questions thus far. Let me just see. Yep, I have a, a question here. Um, can you access the admin portal without a license, i.e. for IT to administer? So to access it, yes. So you'll just have to go through the main Bluebeam website, or actually I can use this uh, screen that you see. Go to the main Bluebeam website, select the login option, and then you'll be able to then, if you, of course, if you're an admin, then you'll be able to specify who has what licenses. Uh, so no, you don't need an actual license, um, like a physical, like core complete license. You'll still be able to administer the users. Also, just another question, of course, since we are so a, now have switched to subscription, you may have seen me do it already. You can log in to multiple locations, so you're not just being able to log in to review desktop and not use it, um, use Bluebeam Cloud. So I can log in to review desktop. I can log into Bluebeam Cloud. Um, if I have a home PC and I have review installed there, I can then, then um, log into that. So you're able to log in to up to five devices with just one Bluebeam ID. There's a question here about the tool chest. So can I push my tools chest um, from Bluebeam Cloud back to desktop? At the moment, that's only a one direction. Um, so when you switch to subscription, you log into Review Desktop, there will be a pop-up that asks if you want to push from Review Desktop your tool chest to the cloud. At the moment, we don't have a way that if I add some tools to my tool chest in Bluebeam Cloud and push it back to desktop, that will be something available in the future. Uh, yes, someone said, sorry, I didn't catch the requirements for SSO. Um, yes, so for SSO, you must be on subscription. So if you're still on perpetual licensing, you need to have already switched to subscription. If you have done that, you are currently on subscription now, you must have a minimum of 100 users. At the moment, that is the limitation. I don't know if that will continue to be the case going forward. Um, it's only because the amount of work that has to be done for subscription. If you do have a minimum of 100 or more users, definitely reach out to us because we will need to, there are some things that we need to discuss between yourself and your IT and 
or if you have purchased through a reseller, reach out to your reseller and they will be able to assist you with regards to getting set up for single sign-on. Just seeing if there's any other questions. Again, thank you for your time. I do have um, just one other thing I would like to show you. If you need to reach out to us, here are our contact details. Also, of course, if you need to log in to any of the information like Bluebeam Clouds or the organizational admin, you have the bluebeam.com forward slash UK and you have the login option there. Or if you need to reach out to us directly, if you have any questions with regards to anything that I've talked about, you can contact us at sales.uk at bluebeam.com or if you've purchased through a reseller, of course, definitely reach out to the reseller that you have purchased from to answer any of your questions. If there are no other questions, I'm just having one quick look. Uh, uh, yep, so just one more question here. Is there a published roadmap for cloud development features, et cetera? We don't have anything at the moment that's showing, okay, we'll come out with this particular feature function at this time. I would highly recommend, of course, if there's anything new, we will always, or I will actually want to do a webinar about that particular feature or function, of course, if it's not just one. Uh, hopefully, there will be a few, and we'll just hold another webinar like today to show that particular feature function or workflow that can be done. Also, highly recommend to keep sight of our Bluebeam website. Also, if you've not joined our LinkedIn page, we also make announcements there as far as any Thing that's new that's being launched. So LinkedIn and also our Twitter account as well. Um, that just makes it easier. So you're not having to come to the website. You can just see any post uh, that we've posted via any of those social media channels. Okay, yeah, I don't see any other questions. Thank you very much for your time. And this concludes our webinar.